just make the crowd go. <laughs> In today's video we take a look at Drew Cooper who is another monster of the game and can on many occasions get the ball speed above 200 miles an hour, something most of us would need a rocket launcher to help us accomplish. We also take a look at the shoulder tilt's true connection and I guarantee you it's not what you have heard or seen before. Join me today as I try to educate you on why Drew can destroy the golf ball but also how players like Rory McIlroy do it more consistently. Get ready to learn about the great Drew Cooper. Good afternoon, Line Golf Academy members and guests, and welcome back to another one. I'm just fascinated about these long drive hitters, and I want to do another video today. Drew Cooper, this was a suggestion by one of our uh, subscribers. I hope he's a subscriber, and if not, I hope you become one. He wanted to see Drew Cooper, so... For those who are not familiar with Drew Cooper, he is definitely a long ball hitter. Pretty impressive motion. And I pulled up Martin uh, Borgmeier's swing again on the left side of the screen. Just to kind of compare at how setup really affects your shoulder tilting motion and what to look for in your shoulder tilt in relation to how that ball is set up to your shoulder. So this is a little bit of a confusing thing, so hopefully you can keep up today. But hopefully you can open your eyes to something else about the golf swing. I don't see much touchdown today. So on the left side of the screen, I know Martin has this little hitch in the, in the beginning of his motion. So there's right where I believe that he is set up. Even though he's starting this transfer, this little four press sets up his whole swing. And I wanted to show you the difference between the two. Okay, so we're going to draw the first line from his head right through his hands and wherever those two connect. I'll do the same thing over here with Drew. So head down through the hands and wherever those connect. So we see one is clearly a little bit closer to the golf ball. In that case, that's Drew. Next up, we're going to pick a nice yellow to decide this one and you got to keep up with me here while I change colors and then I'm going to draw a yellow line where the shoulder tilt is and this is just eyeballing it so forgive me if it's not perfect but hopefully this will at least give you something to look at and figure out how the tilting works in relation to everything and now we've got to figure out where that tilting is connected to the golf ball position so now we take that same yellow line, start with the golf ball, and we're gonna go 90 degrees. And again, you've just gotta forgive me, this is eyeballing it, and sometimes my eyeball isn't great. So that's about 90 degrees, give or take a few degrees, forgive me, but you can kind of see the point here. We can see that one is clearly off the body, and that is Martin on the left side. That's ball position, hands pressing, that'll do that to you. It takes that ball position and moves it away from your body. It takes that ball position, even though it is connected, ideally up and down, the further you get your hands out in front, the more that right shoulder starts to tilt, and all of a sudden the tilting pushes your ball out in no man's land, it's no longer connected to your body, where at least Drew, is connected to the right shoulder. So he is very right shoulder dominant in this golf swing because of that, where Martin has to do a little bit of contouring. And if you watched my video yesterday, I described why he has to do this and tilt back under because of this setup. If you haven't watched that, I'll put a link down below. Give it a watch. Now let's just go straight down to impact. So what we're gonna do is try and pause this right at impact on both swings. We're gonna start to redraw some more lines. So now we're gonna go for purple and look at where the tilt is in relation to the starting tilt. So we're gonna first start with Martin. We're gonna, again, this is eyeballing, but hopefully you guys will see what's going on here. And purple down through. And then the final line we're gonna do in green. And what this green line is gonna represent is where the cross section of the tilting action is in relation to the starting ball position. And we know that starting ball position by the bottom of that yellow line. So I'm gonna try and put that right on that cross section and pull it straight down. And same thing here, cross section and pull it straight down. So what do you notice? Already we can see that Drew on the right side is not really moving much. He is still connected to the right side of his shoulder. So when you hear some of these professionals and some of these good players and they, you ask them how does it feel, I feel like I'm hitting it with my right shoulder, I see my right side's getting through because in in all fact, even though your hands are connected to your chest and that's what keeps them in the right position, tilting wise, the axis between your starting tilt and your impact tilt shows you where that power is being delivered through. So here we have Martin on the left side. We can see that his tilting is pretty good at impact. 
and yesterday's video again if you haven't watched it go watch it we talked about why he has to make that new tilting action because of his setup but if you take a look at his right shoulder tilt action it's nowhere near that ball position connection to the tilt at starting position because of that four press that he has so another example of why four press can really hurt you Martin gets away with it because he tilts a lot more to adjust his spine angle and he's very powerful with his right hand where Drew on the right side has a very steady motion. Very little things can go wrong when you're that connected all the way through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare Drew with Rory McIlroy because even though they're both very powerful hitters, there's a reason why Rory is a little bit more consistent and it has to do with his ability to not tilt as much at impact. And we're going to look at some differences between Drew Cooper and Rory McIlroy. So stick with me while I change videos. Okay, I took the liberty of not boring you guys to death by drawing these similar lines that we worked with on the last clip. And this is basically where the golf ball is in relation to your shoulder tilt. And you can see they're both on the right side. Rory's is slightly more inside, but again, my lines aren't perfect. That could be a degree or so off, but it's close enough for government work. As we take this club back, we see that right hip tilt over and then once he gets that then he turns and he gets back onto that right brace line same thing with rory on the right side you see the right hit move over and then turn we can see one is a little bit deeper obviously a little bit more shoulder turn where rory is a little bit less but one thing that rory does do really well is he restricts his hips a little bit more so than drew now restricting your hips you can see the amount of torque you can see that shirt and those pants are just stretching like crazy we can see the gap between both sets of knees we see rory's a little bit wider we see less left knee kind of caving in either one of these is very powerful ready to go but rory's just looks tighter and things are more in connection with each other drew on the left side has his hand much higher gets that secondary plane line much higher rory on the right side you can see it's a little bit lower because we see those hands are not as far up away from his head they both look coiled they both look ready rory looks slightly stacked more on the left side but let's take a look on the way down first move on the left side we see that drew gets his hands to drop right in you can see that the club head kind of remains static while these hands are dropping in so a lot of hand dropping down to that secondary plane line very quickly and that's to help him tilt under where rory you don't see much dropping of the hands they're just going along with the turn and the right shoulder getting ready to dip down a lot of this motion is you can see the whole body going down but there's less dropping of the hands so this is a very powerful move that drew has uh it gets a little bit harder to time obviously because there's more moving parts but still equally as powerful different ways to skin the cat let's move down a little bit further now we start to see some differences so we look at that right elbow we see in drew we can see a full right elbow hogan-esque where Rory, we don't see much right elbow now. It could be a height in the camera, it could be something like that, but I promise you there's a little bit of difference here. We see that Rory is staying in his tilt a lot more while he is turning, where Drew is starting to tilt his right shoulder more under to get to that secondary plane line quicker along with his hand drop. Drew's club actually drops below his lower plane line and he's able to swing more up, which increases his tilt angle because he's trying to just launch the ball as high as he can, reduce the spin rate. But where Rory becomes pretty good with his driving accuracy is he doesn't separate his upper body from his lower body as much as Drew. And we can tell this by that right elbow. We don't really see any of that right elbow as he keeps turning. So what he's doing is he's, he's maintaining his tilt a lot more efficiently than Drew. And I don't say that to say anything bad about Drew, but Drew is trying to do a different thing. He's trying to hit it as hard as he can. So once we go down into impact, we see the tilting action. You see the whole body fall back to allow him to tilt more where rory doesn't really fall back he stays in that spine angle and turns as well as tilting now if we take a look at the new tilt let's draw this in that nice barney purple i don't know if that's barney it's something else but let's look at the new tilting okay so there's one tilt we're going to pull it back and then here is the other tilt. We're going to pull this one back. We can see the reduction of tilt on the right side. Most of his tilting is still under that yellow. And remember, the yellow line is where the ball is in relation to your setup tilt, where we see Drew falling back. Now, if we draw that same cross section, there is one down to the golf ball. So it's, again, it's that nice close position, where here, Rory's cross section is almost ahead of the golf ball it's almost perfectly straight so where his shoulder tilting is you can see that's relatively level there's no tilting under there's no reduction of tilt 
his tilting stayed relative to his ball position because it's a straight up and down line. So not only is he able to maintain his tilt, but he's also turning perfectly. So this is why Rory at five foot seven, five foot eight, 160 pounds can just annihilate this golf ball. And he does it very efficiently at a high tour level quality because of that pink line right there. And you pair that with strength and flexibility, this is what separates Rory and makes him probably one of the most consistent long drivers of the game. I don't say the most consistent driver of the game because that's not the true, but we're talking about consistent long drivers of the game. And the key thing is once you follow through the right hand, it does roll over and they get that release. But when you compare it to that rollover, you can see that rollover is just a little bit quicker. And we can tell this because the club is in about the same angle. You know, there's that angle and there's this angle. So they're about the same angle. But look at the height of where the lower part of the grip is in relation to the body. So Rory's is a little bit higher where Drew is a little bit lower. So we see a little bit more tilting requiring the hands to kind of activate a little sooner than Rory. So I hope that helps you. I hope it didn't confuse you. If it did confuse you, I apologize. I tend to do that to myself sometimes too. But if you like this, hit that like and subscribe. It really helps me grow. And if you have any more suggestions, thank you for the suggestion today. Let me know down below and I'll definitely try and help you out. Other than that, you guys have a good one. Fairways and greens.